And then February 11th, 2011 occurs, and it's a, it is truly a day that changed our lives. Uh, that's when Scott Walker introduced legislation in Wisconsin that has essentially ended the collective bargaining rights of public employees. Um, what you have to understand about the audacity of that move was Wisconsin would be, was the birthplace of AFSCME, which is the largest public employee union in the United States. It was a public employees union that Martin Luther King marched with uh, to support the rights of sanitation workers. So to come into Wisconsin and, and strike at the heart of public sector organized labor was, was a pretty bold and aggressive move on their part. Uh, I've been a police officer for 15 years uh, in 2010. Uh, Melissa and I are married, we had three kids. Life was reasonably good, we're clipping along, kind of, you know, fairly unaware of what was going on. It's great to meet you. Uh, Brian, I, I wanted to start with you. Um, you're new to political activism and when the occupation of the state capitol building occurred. Um, what, what moved you, you know, to move into the activist part of the whole operation? Well, you know, we, we knew very early on that the legislation they were proposing was not going to affect us. The, the governor made a very conscious choice to, to exclude police and fire, um, try to divide labor, and, um, you know, I think he wanted police and fire there to clean up the civil unrest they predicted would happen. Uh, the occupation of the Capitol started quickly after that bill was announced, um, and it grew daily to the point where we had 150,000 people in the streets. We talked about this before. It was literally like this overnight thing. I'd heard rumblings from uh, Brian's uh, MPPOA, the Police Association, about some bad legislation coming down from Scott Walker, and then we, you know, I was getting information funneled from them. And then um, we, heard, we heard that the TAA, the teacher's assistants, were going to be doing a march um, and delivering valentines to the governor. And it just turned into one of the, uh, for some reason, I uh, almost cannot articulate why I did, but it was like, I have to go. Mm -hmm. I put my four-year-old on my back in a backpack, and I just went. I had no idea, really. I mean, we, you know, bad legislation. Something's happening. I don't know. And then from that first moment, um, arriving at the Capitol and listening to speech after speech of just rank and filers, community members, religious leaders about what was happening and how they felt about the, what was happening and what, you know, and then realizing like this boot of oppression was on our hearts um, and that this was wrong. We saw kind of a strange series of events in the United States, um, a lot of voter apathy, um, an economy that was uh, in trouble and other things that happened that led to um, this massive rise of what we call the Tea Party. From when this uprising started, I was a stay-at-home mom. It, it just turned into this thing, this, um, it's hard to even explain. It was like if I wasn't there, I felt like um, I was neglecting a child you know, three little kids, so it, I had to be there. It was like a compult, it was just this thing inside of me that if I, you know, I had to plan every minute of every day around, when was I gonna go to the Capitol next? <clears throat> the first day, actually, we went down to the protest, we did what cops do and we handed out donuts. <laughs> we got 30 dozen donuts and we were just handing them out to protesters and talking with people. Right. And then some guys from the AFL-CIO came up and said, we're, we want to sh can you help us shuttle some food into the teaching assistants who have been occupying the Capitol mm -hmm. over the weekend? Um, you know, they're getting low on supplies. So we grab these trays of food and pallets of water and we start walking in the Capitol. You know, we have some cops for labor signs and I don't think we had our shirts made up yet no. by then. Um, but we come into the rotunda of the Capitol, which is jam-packed with people at the time, and the people saw us and they just, the place erupted. Mm -hmm. I mean, that the cops were there mm -hmm. in support of, of the people protesting. You yeah. Know, off duty cops. It was really, a, it was a very, you know, really emotional moment. And we look around and people are just crying and, mm -hmm. and clapping and all that. How would you describe who you saw there when, when, when you went to the Capitol? It sounds like you're saying I, you saw your neighbors, uh, you saw people like you. It was moms, dads, aunts, uncles, grandparents. There were a lot of retired people there. There were students there. The beautiful thing was this um, 
the relationship between the students and labor. It was, you know, it was a historically not something that has happened before, but students and labor mm -hmm. coming together was this powerful, wonderful union. And then, yeah, it was just, you look around and it was, it was interesting, like in the rotunda, because there were these outside voices ex talking about what was happening there, you know, the Fox News, the pundits. But for those of us in there, it was the most, the infrastructure that was created by the people there was the most smooth running, peaceful. There was yoga, there were people knitting, there was chanting, and there was um, meditation. There was a kid's corner, there was a first aid station. It was the most amazing, you know, it was mm -hmm. like it couldn't have been better run, you know. I'll get you both to, to jump in. Um, what kind of what kind of relationships, if any, built out of this as, you know, it's, it's, it's come and gone. Um, what, what, what could you describe the of relationships perhaps with, within unions and other unions and then with, with community groups or social groups from, from your end, Melissa? How, what's grown out of this? It started a movement. I mean, it, it really did. And I think it's hard to, you know, given the fact that we lost the recall election and, you know, things are, are not great right now in Wisconsin, honestly. But I think some of the results aren't tangible yet. We've built this really solid movement. There's a, an entire cadre of citizen journalists that have popped up to do what the mainstream media isn't doing, which is telling the truth about what's going on in Wisconsin and this country. Um, we have, my union has reached out to many other unions, other public employee unions, private sector unions. I mean, a few of us from the Cops for Labor group went and walked a picket line in the middle of January with striking machinists because um, their company was doing the same thing that Scott Walker did to us and did to other unions and we went up and we, that's unprecedented for a police union to go walk a picket line you know with with, with a, a private sector union I mean this is how the conversation is changing mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just made people more aware of the fact that they have a duty to get involved that if you sit on the sidelines this is what happens you know, our country fell asleep in 2010, and we got the Tea Party as a result. Mm -hmm. People became disengaged, and they stayed home from the polls, and they figured, eh, you know, I, I'm not so interested right now. And, and this is what happens. You know, the corporate interests seized on that opportunity, and, and they installed, uh, you know, all hell in our country mm -hmm. for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And so people, I think, are starting to push back.